Hi, I'm Mike. Pokey Tips Mike, and it looks like Game Freak done goofed. About a week ago, the Isle of Armor DLC came out, and ever since then, data miners and hackers have been having a field day with all the extra stuff that Game Freak left in about the upcoming Pokemon DLC, The Crown Tundra. They left details about the map, future Pokemon events, characters, new items, lots of crazy stuff that if you guys want, I'll be talking about that very soon. But this right here is absolutely insane. It looks like right now we have the full list of all the returning Pokemon that are going to be coming back in the Crown Tundra DLC months before it's supposed to come out. So this information comes from Pokemon Data Miner ABC Boy 101 on Twitter and has been backed up by another Pokemon Data Miner, Matt Yukana. And it's pretty interesting. They were basically able to figure out all the returning Pokemon because in the data of Pokemon Sword and Shield, they still have information for basically every single Pokemon that has ever existed. Now, generally, the Pokedex information for Pokemon that aren't in the game is blank. There's nothing there. However, this list of returning Pokemon, instead of having blank Pokedex entries, it was obvious to the data miners that their Dex entries were deleted, which implies there was Pokedex information being worked on for these Pokemon, but they didn't want people to read their Dex entries, so they deleted it from the game. Now that's a pretty telltale sign right there. It's like eating a cookie but leaving crumbs out on the table. Everybody knows that you did it. And when we look at this list of returning Pokemon, it matches up pretty well with the information that we've already seen from trailers and other Pokemon that we knew were returning anyway based on information from their website and other sources. So it looks like this list right here are going to be the Pokemon returning in the Crown Tundra update. Now keep in mind, there can be updates made between now and when the Crown Tundra comes out, and also this list is not going to list Galarian form Pokemon. But basically, this is as legit as it gets, it's not a 4chan leak. So this is likely what we're going to be seeing when the Crown Tundra comes out in November. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about all the Pokemon that are returning. So we had the Nidoran line, the Nidoran female Nidorina and Nido Queen, as well as Nidoran male, Nidorino, and Nido King. We knew about these Pokemon already, but I'm pretty happy to have them come back. I love their shinies so, so much. Then we have Zubat and Golbat. Oh, goodness gracious, I'm not ready for those guys to come back. Hopefully they're not as annoying as Sharpedo is in the water on the Isle of Armor. And we have Jinx, Electabuzz, and Magmar as our classic Ice, Electric, and Fire trio. Then we have some fossil Pokemon coming back. Omnimite, Omastar, Kabuto, and Kabutops. Lord Helix and the Dome Fox. I'm really wondering how those are going to work in this game. I don't think Game Freak is going to let us do this, but imagine if we could fuse those fossil Pokemon together. Oh, and Aerodactyl's there too. If I'm going to talk about fossil Pokemon, I might as well mention that one too. But imagine if we could fuse these five fossil Pokemon together, as well as the other fossil Pokemon that are going to be returning later on in this list, with the fossil Pokemon that we have in the Galar region. Imagine the crazy combos that you get. And for that reason, the amount of combinations that would be possible with this, I don't think it would be able to happen. I feel like in-game there's gonna be some reason that they give us saying like, oh, these Pokemon are old and their DNA is intact so you can't fuse them together, but just imagine if you could fuse together a Kabutops and a Dracovish. That would be a nightmare. Then some obvious returning Pokemon. Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. We knew they were getting Galarian forms, and when a Pokemon gets a Galarian form, obviously that means their Cantonian form or whatever their original form is also going to be in the game as well. Then the Dragon Boys are coming back. We have Dratini, Dragonair, and Dragonite. I know people are going to be happy about that. I know I sure am. Dragonite has always been one of my favorite Pokemon. Also not listed on this list, but it is going to be obtainable in the Crown Tundra, is Mewtwo. Since Mewtwo is already in the game, it's not included on this list, but when the Crown Tundra comes out, we'll be able to get it. Now on to the Johto region. Obviously, we're going to get Crobat, Smoochum, Elekid, and Magby, but we're also seeing the Legendary Beasts, which we knew about, Raikou, Entei, and Suicune, and Lugia, and ho -Oh. Again, basically all these Pokemon were confirmed, but that's a nice eight more Pokemon from the Johto region. Now, this is going to make some people happy when we move on to the Hoenn region. We are getting some starter Pokemon back. Trico, Grovile, Sceptile, Torchic, Combusken, and Blaziken, and of course, Mudkip, Marshtomp, and Swampert. I am so happy to see these guys back. I love the Hoenn region starters. All three lines are amazing. I always loved using Marshtomp in silly Pokemon battles. Marshtomp, don't sleep on Marshtomp. That thing with an Evil Light is a pretty decent Pokemon. Pokemon. And again, it's gonna be nice having the Hoenn starters back. That's a pretty awesome confirmation for us. Although it is gonna be kind of sad having them back without their Mega Forms. However, maybe they'll get Gigantamax Forms. All the Kanto and Galar starters have Gigantamax Forms, so maybe the Hoenn ones will get one as well. Or maybe not, since the Alolan starters didn't get Gigantamax Forms. We'll just have to wait and see. 
Then we have some more Pokemon we already knew about coming back, Aron, Larion, and Agron, Swablu, and Altaria. But the Hoenn fossil Pokemon are actually kind of new, so those fossil Pokemon are coming back as well. Then we have Absol, Sfeel, Celio and Walrein, Relicanth, which might actually be interesting since in the original Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald games, you needed Relicanth to unlock the Reggie trio. Maybe they'll have us use Relicanth in Sword and Shield to unlock the Reggies in these games too as a callback to what you need to do to get them in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. And again, we're getting more amazing dragons back, Bagon, Shelgon, and Salamence as well as more pseudo-legendary Pokemon, Beldum, Metang, and Metagross. It's kind of interesting to me how they're bringing back all the pseudo-legendary Pokemon. We've seen Dragonite, we've seen Salamence, we've seen Metagross. Later on, we're gonna see Garchomp. Maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to fight some old champions in these games, because it would make sense. They're bringing back all the ace Pokemon. Maybe we'll get to see some old champions. Then we have the Reggie Trio, which we already knew about, as well as Latias and Latios, and then Kyogre, Groudon, and Rayquaza. Now onto the Sinnoh region. We're not really getting many Sinnoh boys, back. We've got Spiritomb, Gibble, Gabite, and Garchomp, pretty awesome, Electivire and Magmortar, and then the Sinnoh Lake Trio, Uxie, Mesprit, and Azelf, and then of course the rest of the legendaries, Dialga, Palkia, Heatran, Regigigas, Giratina, and Cresselia. That's kind of weird though, Cresselia and no Darkrai, especially since we'll see later on that other mythical Pokemon are being added back. Now onto the Univer region, we have Victini, Audino, that experienced monster, and then therefore fossil Pokemon as well, Crygonagal, that's an interesting choice, and then the legendary genies, Thunderous, Tornadus, and Landorus. We also have confirmation that the Reveal Glass is going to be coming back, so we know their alternate forms are going to be in the game as well. And then finally, we wrap off the Univer region with the mythical Pokemon Genesect. So slowly but surely, a lot of mythicals are getting added back to the game as well. I guess since these mythicals are being added back, we can expect to see them in raids in the future, or special distribution events. And then on to the Kalos Pokemon, once again we're seeing the fossil Pokemon returning. I guess it really does make sense since the Crown Tundra, its whole theme is exploration, so having the fossil Pokemon come back, you know, you explore, you get the fossils, it does make sense to me. Again, I'm just wondering, will we be able to combine these fossil Pokemon? I don't think so, since there's gonna be so many of them, but if we were able to, that would be a wonderful surprise. And then the last regular Pokemon there is Carbink. Then from there we have Xerneas, Evoltal, Zygarde, Deonce, and Volcanion. I'm hoping that Deonce has an easy way to get it in this game. Maybe now in the Crown Tundra they could finally find a way to combine Carbink and Deonce and make it so we use Carbink to somehow get Deonce. I totally think Carbink should have evolved into Deonce, but whatever, we're a few generations too late for that. So that's an even 10 Pokemon from Kalos, and on to the Alola region, it's all legendaries. We've got the four Tapus, Coke. Lele, Bulu, and Finny, and then all of the Ultra Beasts. So yeah, the Ultra Beasts are going to be returning too. And for anybody who might be doubting and thinking the Ultra Beasts might not be coming back, once again, it was data mined from the game that there's going to be a special event called They Came From The Ultra Beyonds that's going to allow us to encounter these Ultra Beasts once again. So for all of you guys that like the Ultra Beast Pokemon, you should be pretty happy. They're all coming back, and you'll likely be able to catch them all once again in Sword and Shield. So my friends, now that we have what looks to be the accurate list of all the Pokemon that are going to be returning in the Crown Tundra, we can combine that list with the Pokemon that we already know are in the game and are going to be featured in the Crown Tundra, and using those two pieces of information, we can figure out the total amount of returning Pokemon in the Crown Tundra. So let's take a look at my ultra professional word document over here. So we know there's gonna be 23 returning Pokemon from the Kanto region. Mewtwo will be able to find those Dynamax adventures on the Crown Tundra along with basically every other legendary Pokemon. And I believe all 23 of these Pokemon are gonna get dex entries in the Crown Tundra. Mew is also in the game, but I don't think it's getting a dex entry. It's just been chilling there since day one. Now for the Johto region, we're getting nine Pokemon added back. Basically stuff that ties the Kanto and of course the legendary Pokemon for those Dynamax adventures. For the Hoenn region, we're getting 37 total Pokemon back, which is pretty awesome. Much better than the Isle of Armor, which only gave us six Hoenn region Pokemon back. And also, don't forget, Jirachi is also in the game's data, but it's probably not going to be in the Crown Tundra Pokedex. Now, on to the Sinnoh region. If you count alternate forms, like Giratina's origin form, that means we're getting 16 Pokemon returning. For Unova, it's going to be a total of 26 returning Pokemon, once again, including alternate forms. And even though the data mine only mentioned these Pokemon over here, don't forget, we already have the Swords of Justice trio, plus Keldeo, and Kyurem, Reshiram, and Zekrom already in the game's files, and right now they're basically transfer-only Pokemon. 
However, we do know we will be able to catch these Pokemon in the Crown Tundra, whether it be through the Dynamax Adventures, or I know the Swords of Justice trio and Keldeo, they're gonna have some sort of special event. I'm not sure if it's tied into the Dynamax Adventures, but there's gonna be something special that when you capture these three, you'll be able to capture Keldeo as well, which is pretty awesome. I love it when they make a mythical Pokemon actually obtainable in game like they did back in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire with Deoxys, so I'm pretty excited for this right here. The Kalos region is only getting 10 Pokemon coming back. I'm not sure if Deoxy is going to be catchable or not. Once again, it depends if they want to tie that into Carbink or something, make it part of the story. And I think Volcanion is going to be something that they leave exclusively for raids or special events. And over to the Alola region, we're getting 22 total returning Pokemon. Absolutely insane. And just like what I said before with the Unova region, don't forget, we already have the whole Nebby family in the game, as well as Necrozma, Nebby's evil cousin. And we know that all these legendaries are going to be catchable in the Crown Tundra. So putting all those Pokemon together, the ones that we got from the data mine and the ones that we already had in game, but we know are going to be returning in this update, that gives us basically a total of 143 Pokemon confirmed for the Crown Tundra update. Now, do keep in mind, take this with a grain of salt. It seems extremely likely that this is going to be the list of Pokemon that we're getting back, but a lot can change between now and November. Pokemon can get added, Pokemon can get cut, so do take it with a grain of salt. Also, it is possible that this information was incorrectly interpreted, although again, from what we know about the Pokemon returning already, like basically all the legendary Pokemon, Garchomp family, the Zubat family, the Nidoran families, the Kalos fossil Pokemon, all those Pokemon have been confirmed by Pokemon itself to be coming back in the Crown Tundra, and they also fall into this convenient category of Pokemon with deleted Pokedex entries, which would be a major coincidence if it was just a coincidence. So my friends, down in the comments section, let me know about which Pokemon you're the most excited to see come back in the Crown Tundra. For me, it's gotta be the Trico family. I'm so excited to bring my Sceptile from Emerald all the way up to Sword and Shield. My friends, thanks so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it and you haven't already, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and you want to see more of my Pokemon content. And my friends, I'll catch you in the next one.